Hi, I'm Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety. I'm so thrilled to welcome you to this SAG AFTRA Foundation conversation at home with Defending Jacob. Uh, today's guest is an actor you've seen in such films as Midnight Special, It's One and Two, and Knives Out. He currently plays the title role in the Apple Plus series opposite Chris Evans and Michelle Dockery. Please welcome Jaden Martell. Hi, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, this is primarily an audience of SAG actors who watch this, although, you know, we let everybody watch. Um, but I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? Because you started, you're still very young, but you started at a really young age, didn't you? Yeah, um, I, I, I think it was through my first movie, St. Vincent, um, I did when I was 10. So I imagine that's where I got the SAG card. Wait, had you done commercials or TV or anything before that? I had done commercials for, um, I guess I started when I was about eight, nine. Um, I did commercials for a bit, and then I booked uh, St. Vincent when I was 10 without an agent or anything. That's amazing, because I think for those of you who don't know, that's the lead role in a movie with Melissa McCarthy and Bill Murray. <laughs> were you intimidated or were you too young to know better? Uh, yes, <laughs> I was very intimidated um, because obviously it was my first movie, so that was scary enough, but it was with Bill Murray, who was um, Bill Murray, and he's kind of terrifying a little bit and very, um, very intimidating. Um, on that, he's just, uh, on this, on, on St. Vincent, he was um, kind of took the lead for all of us. It was... Uh, Ted Melfi, the director, it was his first project and my first project. And so he definitely led us, led us all through this whole thing. But um, he was a little scary at first, but I think <laughs> I, I grew on him. <laughs> That's great. Um, because you did start so young, I'm curious, did you, did you always think of this as a career or did you start off sort of having fun and, and was there a point, maybe you haven't reached that point yet where you're like, I'm, I wanna do this for a career. Um, that's a good question. I, I don't, I never thought about it. I grew up in, in Philadelphia and, um, there's not a lot of opportunities out there to be an actor. I always loved film, but I didn't think it was a possibility. Um, but when I moved to LA, I, um, was introduced to it and I was a little hesitant at first cause I was pretty shy and, um, uh, introverted as a kid. So I didn't think it would be for me, but I was like, you know what, I'm, I'll try it out. And if I don't like it, I'll stop. And so I went on a few auditions and was still unsure about it. And I think I found out that I wanted to do it on St. Vincent. I was like, okay, this is the most amazing experience I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've, you know, become more and more uh, in love with it as I go on. Um, I think I might know the answer to this question, but did you ever have any sort of formal training or has it sort of been on the job training and a lot of instinct? Uh, no, I never went to any classes or anything like that. Um, wow. But yeah, I, I definitely grow through every project and just by watching movies and watching people like Bill and Melissa and seeing how they act and reacting to them. Um, I'm super lucky that I've gotten to work with those people and so many incredible actors and directors that I can learn from. Because, I mean, you've had some really challenging roles, and I'm just starting with Defending Jacob. Um, I know this series is based on the book by William Landay. Um, were you at all familiar with the novel when the project found its way to you? No, I wasn't, actually. Um, and I, I actually started reading it um, before doing the project, obviously. Um, but I got about a chapter in and I stopped reading it. I, just because um, it's definitely from Andy's perspective, which is my father, and I didn't want to know what he was thinking just because I'm supposed to be focusing on Jacob, obviously. And um, the characters are quite different for me. Uh, I, I think Mark Bombach and Morton wanted the character to feel more um, like a normal teenager, more relatable in a way. 
Yeah. Um, I haven't read the book, but, but based on what I've heard, they've made some really interesting changes, which I, I like. I, I don't want a, a book to be exactly interpreted to the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely upgraded in a sense just because it with social media and texting and things like that. And um, yeah, and and because it plays with different perspectives and just the, the book is completely from Andy's point of view, um, kind of you, you get to see the, you know, in the minds of the other characters, which is interesting too. So how did the project find its way to you? Was it sort of the normal channels? Um, I was working in Toronto on it too. And then um, I sent in a self tape and then um, I got it when I was working on Knives Out with Chris Evans. <laughs> and um, yeah, we both found out that I was going to be playing his son while we were shooting that. And we were shooting together. He's like, uh, so are you going to, are we doing this? Are, are you going to be my son? Um, which was pretty cool. And it was fun to get to know him beforehand. Yeah, I'm curious about that because obviously in Knives Out, you have a much more contentious relationship. His, uh, yes. his character in Defending Jacob likes you a lot more. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> for sure. He loves his son, whereas you're kind of at loggerheads <laughs> in, in Knives Out. But did you, did it help getting to know each other on that movie? Moving yes, on to uh, Jacob? For sure. Um, just, I, I mean, that, that set was so incredible um, because Ryan Johnson created such a fun environment to be on. And there were so many incredible actors. And we just basically got to hang out in our, in our green room, which was this tiny basement, and talk about movies and play games and get to know each other. It was cool. That's so cool. You've been a part of some really awesome ensembles. I mean, the It movies is, is looks like it's an actor's dream. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, for sure. I've been very lucky to work with a lot of great people. And um, it was like summer camp. It was just, um, it was, it was just so much fun. And I, all those kids are now my best friends. For, oh, yeah? yeah? Did you uh, get to spend any time with James McAvoy on that movie? Um, a little bit. Um, we definitely got to know each other and um, we did like a little speed dating thing where we um, were at a cafe and we just um, took turns talking to the adults and getting to know everybody. Um, and that was just nice to talk about us as humans, but also get to talk about the character that we were both playing. And um, we even wrote letters to our future selves in character and we gave them to um, the older actors. That's so cool. Um, I'm sort of curious, what do, what do you think, I would, I would add then Defending Jacob to this list too because your ensemble in this is amazing. Um, you have Michelle Dockery playing your mother, Cherry Jones. I mean, I just, even though it's heavy material, I, I, I'm curious, was it, was it a fun set? Um, yeah, somehow it was fun even though the material was so heavy and so, uh, dark, obviously, and um, it was, you know, a lot of scenes were very emotionally heavy. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Chris made it such a fun environment, and Morton, um, there was, there was like ping pong tournaments, and everyone was joking and telling stories, and, and then we would have to start crying in a few minutes, but it was a very nice um, environment to be in, for sure. Are you the kind of actor who, um, you know, finds it hard to shake that off at the end of the day? Like if you're doing a really difficult scene, do you, do you have a, a process to sort of help you decompress? Um, not really. I, 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 think, I think whenever I have a scene like that, I'm sort of, um, I think beforehand I go, I am like hard to deal with and just moody and, and uh, sort of have a dark cloud over me. But then as soon as the scene's over, I'm, I'm happy. And it's, it's just like getting a scene done like that is so uh, satisfying. Like, mm. um, it's like what you look forward to as an actor. So I don't have any trouble feeling happy after that. And did you take on any sort of special preparation to play Jacob? I mean, um, there, I don't want to give anything away because there's so much going on there, but uh, I don't even know where you would begin. 
Um, I guess I started with figuring out what happened to Jacob, um, just creating a background and a mindset for him. Because um, I feel like it's easy to kind of get lost and not have a firm background and just like switch and play around with with um, whether he did it or not. Um, so I needed to figure out if he did it or if he didn't do it for myself and like have a very firm uh, background that I could just hold on to and, um, you know, kind of keep me grounded um, and to not forget who the character was and, you know, his history. Did you talk to the writers and directors about that at all? Or did you sort of have to come up? Because cause the, the show keeps it, makes very good cases on both sides for why he could have mm -hmm. done it, why he might not have done it. And yeah. I'm just sort of curious if there was, if you guys like sat down and all agreed, like either, and you don't have to tell us, you know, what you decided, but were you all in agreement or did you sort of take it upon yourself to find your own answers? Um, well, actually, that was one of the first questions I asked them. Um, when I first met Mark and Morton was whether he did it or not. And Morton said, I don't know, you, you decide and don't tell me, don't tell your mom, don't tell anybody, keep it to yourself. Um, just because whether he did it or not, I don't want it to affect how I approach the story and how I shoot it. Um, because it doesn't really change the story. It just for me, it changes, um, certain things and certain internal thoughts and um, and doesn't really change the way the character appears or the story progresses or anything. Did your um, parents in the, in, in Chris and Michelle, I guess, in their roles, did they ever ask you like off the record, hey, do you think you did it? <laughs> uh, no, because they, uh, they knew that I wasn't gonna give it up. And I don't <laughs> think they wanted to know just because I mean, be, their characters don't know, and I think that's the big, um, that's what makes the story complex and what makes the family uh, so tense is them not knowing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the hardest thing for them. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Andy, Chris's character has to totally believe his son is innocent, so mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't want to hear differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, what did end up being the most challenging part of this role? Um, well, I think what I said before, trying to figure out his background and honestly deciding whether he did it or not for myself was pretty difficult. Um, it like took me, it took me a long time to decide through pre production and all of that. And just trying to figure out what was more, um, impactful, I guess. And um, yeah, just figuring out who this character was because he's so open-ended and mm -hmm. so like um, mysterious and um, in the book and in Mark's scripts there, I mean, you don't really see inside of his mind. So I definitely had to use my imagination to figure out who he was. And you also, like you said, didn't didn't want to turn to the book since it is so much Andy's perspective. So you really had to come up with this on your own. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> just just the internal stuff, though. Do you uh, normally like? I don't know if you read the It books. I don't think I'm old enough to read the It books, so I don't <laughs> know if that's like something you would normally do. <laughs> um, I read some of it, but it's a long book. <laughs> it's so long. <laughs> and when I started it. I, we were 13 and I don't, I don't know if I was um, ready to read, read uh, that book. I, I'm bad with horror. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat, so I don't know if I could do it. I'll, I'll give it a try soon. Though. One of the directors of it actually said that they, they felt a little guilty making the kids do these horrific scenes, but they were actually kind of fun. And I'm sort of curious if that if it was the same on defending Jacob, like you know these dramatic or or, mm. or sometimes really violent horrific scenes could could kind of be fun. Oh yeah, those are the most fun scenes to shoot. It's like you would think they would be the like the joking and the laughing ones and having dinner with your family, but the, I feel like the most fun and what I was talking about before the most satisfying scenes are 
the ones where you get to um, go all out and be angry or sad and um, push, push, push yourself to the limits. Yeah. Um, I was thinking because you've worked with Michael Shannon twice in a Midnight Special and then again in Knives Out and now you've worked with Chris Evans twice. Um, who are you looking forward to uh, working with again next? <laughs> hmm. Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I would kill to work with any of um, any of the guys from It um, and Bill Murray or... Um, Clive Owen, I really enjoyed working with. Um, and yeah, I, I know it's pretty funny that I've worked with both of them twice. And Michael Shannon played my dad twice. Yeah, well, I was, I was actually trying to think about that because was he your dad in Midnight Special? I thought he mm -hmm. was sort of like maybe your adoptive dad. I wasn't clear. Yeah, he's my, well, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. Uh, he was my dad. Okay. Let's say. So I love that. I love the idea that you can think that, you know, in 30 or 40 years, you're going to look like a mix of Michael Shannon and Chris Evans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sort of just asking everybody, uh, you know, this is such a strange time. Um, what are, what's sort of keeping you going during this quarantine? Um, I don't know if you're here in Los Angeles, uh, if there's books you're reading or movies you're watching, just, just what keeps you going? Um, well, I'm, I still have to do school every day. Um, oh, you do? Yes, but when I'm done school, I've been watching a million movies a day. Um, I just got the Criterion Channel, which has been my favorite thing, and it's making me like so um, happy, and I have so much like work to do, and just to get to watch. I have a lot of wa uh, movies to watch that are on my list. How um, is the uh, virtual schooling working? Um, well, I'm used to it. I, I've been doing it since I started acting, so nothing really changed for me. Um, but it, it, I mean, I guess it, it's hard to have a social life mm. in, in a way. Um, now everybody knows how that feels. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, I've been lucky that I can make friends through, through acting and through family friends and stuff like that. You know? uh, but but it's very flexible for my schedule and traveling. Are you in your senior year or junior year? Junior year. Oh, okay. I feel really bad for people who are missing things like proms and graduations. Yeah. I think that would be really rough. I know. It, it's, it's a difficult time for everyone. But I, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky. I'm very fortunate that I don't know anyone who's sick. And, um, yeah. So I, I have nothing to complain about. <laughs> That's sort of how I feel too. It's it's not so bad being inside all day. <laughs> um, I also heard you're uh, active with a nonprofit, Film to Future. Can you tell us about mm -hmm. that? Yeah, um, that's cool. Um, they basically um, give opportunities to to um, to uh, less fortunate kids in in LA and uh, get them internships and educate them on the film industry and help get them jobs and um, you know, I think it, it goes beyond donating and giving temporary funds to, to these kids, but gives them a future. And um, I think it's a really beautiful thing because something that I, you know, I can relate to and I feel the film industry has so many jobs and so many different, I mean, there's so many facets of this business that people don't know about and um, so I think they're doing an incredible thing by teaching them and giving them opportunities. How did you come to be involved with them? Um, I just, uh, um, I think my, my mom and I really wanted, to, wanted me to be a part of something just because um, I'm lucky enough to have some sort of uh, voice now through the projects that I've done. So I just wanted to do something um, for, for, for people. And um, my mom discovered this, uh, this organization. So I knew I had to be a part of it and contacted them and um, just got involved with it. Yeah. That's so cool. 
Um, it's interesting to me because you said you, when you came out to LA, it, it wasn't to be an actor. I think I kind of assumed when you moved to LA that, that acting was the intent, but you, you sort of fell into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I moved here with my mom when I was eight and, um, I, I met my now manager who, and all her kids are actors, her whole family is actors. And, um, and like I said, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, but she sort of convinced me um, and I fell into it by accident. And I'm pretty lucky. Well, I mean, you've worked with so many amazing directors and so, so many great actors. It's, it's amazing. Um, do you ever sort of ask them for advice or, or, you know, help, not help, not help isn't the right word, but you know, I, I would want to take advantage of all that knowledge. Oh yeah. Um, I guess I, I feel like, I mean, that is their job to, to, to help their actors and, I definitely learn so much from from them without even asking. Just you know, um, just to see how how they are as humans and how dedicated they are to the projects. Because to be a director, you know, the whole production is on your shoulders, and they are so um, you know, this is their life. You know, being an actor um, or being a child actor, especially. Um, I think it only takes up a certain percentage of, of you, but to be a director, you eat, breathe, sleep your movie. And so, um, and that's been the case for every director I've worked with for sure. And, um, and, and beyond that, how they interact with actors and, you know, um, I've learned, you know, everything that I, I, I owe everything from, from the directors that I've worked with. I was thinking about it and you really have worked with like the nicest directors like Jeff Nichols and Ted Melfi and Ryan mm -hmm. Johnson. Like those are three yes. of the nicest guys in the business. Oh, and Morton Tildum who directed Defending Jacob is another yes. super nice guy. Yes. They, I'm, I'm, yeah, they're incredible. And yeah, like I said, they're so dedicated to the movies and um, I think that's a really um, honorable thing about you, uh, I mean, you clearly have a, a lot of roles ahead of you, but is there something you're really um, anxious to do? You've done so many genres already. Um, I don't know. I guess, I don't know about genres. I, for me, it always depends on the story and the script and the character. So, um, but I just want to play the bad guy. <laughs> Maybe the I bad wanna, guy. <laughs> yeah, I want to be someone that's, that you love to hate and just but then I, I like people like um um Javier Bardem and in, in uh, No Country Full Men where he they're so hateable but but you're also intrigued and drawn to them um and where they almost become the protagonist in a way um yeah that's that's my that's my uh my goal my my dream job I mean, well, you kind of get to play with that a little bit in defending Jacob because the guy could be a monster. We're yes. sort of trying to figure it out. <laughs> yes, definitely. And um, I, I, that was that was what made him so fun is that, you know, he wasn't the bad guy, but he could be. And he was so complex. And, you know, just figuring out that and figuring out who he was was um, really um, informative for me. I mean, because sometimes I'd actually feel really bad for him. And then other times I would think he was a monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go, I want to remind everyone that you can find out information on sag After Foundation's COVID-19 um, emergency fund in the comments. Um, please check that out. Uh, and um, what are you looking forward to doing next? I mean, I know we're, we're kind of at a standstill right now, but do you have, do you have something planned for the future? Um... Yeah, that's a hard question right now, but um, yeah, I, I'm hoping that I I sign on to do, I sign up to do this project called Tunnels, um, and with Susan Sarandon and directed by John Kukaitis. Um We were supposed to be shooting that this summer, but we'll see when that happens. But I'm looking forward to it.
Well, you have extra time to prepare, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really find that character. Sure. Um, well, I want to make sure everyone watches Defending Jacob. Um, it's so good. It's very hard for me um, not to give away anything. <laughs> um, and I don't want to spoil it, but as soon as the, the finale airs, I want everyone to contact me so we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much.